I'm so excited to show everyone what our next unit is. It's one of my very, very favorite surrealistic colored pencil drawings. There's some pretty big goals for this unit. You're going to learn to use colored pencils like an artist. You're going to create a surrealistic composition utilizing unexpected juxtapositions and morphing, which I will talk about in just a moment. You're going to select and utilize a specific color scheme like artists do when they use color in a piece of art. And you're going to explore compositional focal points using both centering and rules of third during our planning phase. And I will talk about that later in this video as well. First, we need to understand some vocab and what makes a piece of art surrealistic. There's two major hallmarks of surrealism. One is unexpected juxtapositions. So the first thing we need to do here is learn the word juxtapositions. If you look at art and learn about art and you're around art and people that talk about art long enough, you're going to hear the word juxtaposition over and over and over again. A juxtaposition is when you place two things close together and that creates a contrasting effect. A really simple example of this is a very tall person standing next to a very short person. The tall person will appear even taller than normal. The short person will appear even shorter than normal. Just by placing those two things next to each other, we start to contrast the two images. So if you look to the image on the right, it's called There's No Way Like the American Way or The Louisville Flood by Margaret White Burke, taken in 1937 during the Great Depression. It shows a line of African American people in Louisville waiting for food after a flood, a flood that has hit Louisville in the Great Depression. So you can imagine it's already a difficult time and now a natural disaster is laid upon that. And in behind this line of people that are hungry and potentially homeless and waiting for food and in need, you see a billboard that says, world's highest standard of living. There's no way like the American way. And you realize the irony of this visual. And all of a sudden, that billboard takes on a new meaning beyond what was intended by the folks that designed the billboard. Now, surrealists use unexpected juxtaposition. That means they're placing things together in the same image that really don't make sense. Like a giraffe in the middle of a Spanish desert with a woman in the foreground with drawers coming out of her leg. None of those things belong together, right? Like that does not make sense. That's an unexpected juxtaposition, putting things next to each other that do not belong or make sense together. That is the first hallmark of surrealism. A second hallmark of surrealism is morphing. One thing either changing into another or one thing being two things at once. So if we look on the left, um, one of my favorite photographers is Jerry Ulsman. This is a piece of his called Untitled 1982. He's a surrealistic photographer. Um, and he's got this root system, this tree, that morphs into this old ruined building. Um, and there's just this beautiful transition from one to another where it feels like this one thing is becoming the other. So that's one example of morphing. Two things joining together, morphing into each other. On the right, there's this great piece by Vladimir Kush, Sunrise um, by the Ocean, 1996. And if you look at this, that orange orb in the middle can be two things. You either can view it as a yolk on this egg where you can see the shells on either side, or you can view it as the sun rising over the ocean, or really you can look at it as being both in one thing. So two, one Thing being two things at once. And you can see that in Vladimir Kush's work. Let's take a look at some work by some artists um, to see if we can see some of these hallmarks in their work. So on the left we have Persistence of Memory, Dali's most famous work, and you can see some unexpected juxtapositions. You've got these clocks that are melting, so that idea of melting in a clock really does not make sense together. Just kind of randomly placed in this desert scene outside of Catechez, his home, um, hometown growing up in Spain. On the right, the burning giraffe. In the background, you can see this giraffe and it's um, 
the mane of the giraffe, I guess, is what you would call it on its back, is both the mane of giraffe, but it's also these flames kind of licking out of that, that mane. So Dolly looked at the mane of the giraffe and thought it reminded him of flames, and so therefore transformed it into that. And if you look at the female figure in the foreground, she's both a female figure and a chest of drawers. We have these drawers kind of opening up out of her legs. So she's morphing. So not only are there unexpected juxtapositions here, there's also morphing occurring. Frida Kahlo is one of my favorite artists. On the left, we can see a piece of hers called Self-Portrait on the Borderline Between Mexico and the United States, done in 1932, in which she juxtaposes Mexico and the U.S., and specifically the more traditional parts of Mexico, not the more industrial parts. And you really get a sense of how she views the U.S. and how she views her home country, just by placing those things next to each other. On the right, you can see an example of Frida Kahlo morphing as well. So she's morphed herself into this deer running through the woods with a stormy sky behind her. There's a lot of symbolism in this piece too, so if you'd like to discuss that with me after the video, let me know. Um, but you can see her morphing herself into the deer, and you also see the unexpected juxtaposition of her being a deer, this deer running with all these arrows in it, um, a lot of things going on in this piece. This is a contemporary artist, um, Kandaro LaPierre, who works out of Brooklyn. He's um, 27 or 28 right now. Um, really great work. You can see a ton of it if you follow him on Instagram. Um, but he works digitally um, and does a lot of digital paintings, um, utilizing his own photographs um, and also some found photographs. Um, but you can see some really interesting examples of morphing in the piece Memory Lane on the right, where the woman's face morphs into a city scene. And then she has kind of an opening in the back of her neck with this unexpected bike and entrance only on the back side. So we've got unexpected juxtapositions and morphing. In the center, we have this beautiful female figure um, with these flowers kind of growing out of her head and a hole where an eye should be, um, and a branch coming out of it, so some unexpected juxtapositions and morphing. And then the same with Autumn of the Mind on the left. Um, I highly suggest you check him out. He has some pretty amazing and beautiful work that really speaks to a lot of what's going on in our world right now and his ex experience as a young African-American man. The process that we're going to go through um, is meant to help you think outside the box and break down boundaries and start to come up with ideas that you wouldn't normally come up with. The first thing we're going to do is create two collages and at the end of this video I'm going to go through that process with you. Then from those two collages you're going to come up with two different compositional sketches. You're only going to end up drawing one as a final drawing, but you're going to come up with two sketches just to kind of push your um, creativity muscles and your practice of ideation. Once you're done with those sketches and we talk about it, you are going to start your final drawing by doing a contour line drawing in graphite and then you'll finish your drawing using colored pencils. We're going to take a look at a couple of um, pieces by some students. So on the right you can see the work of Rihanna Leatherberry. Um, she's got these beautiful glasses and inside each glass the unexpected placement of these little worlds existing inside of each of these glasses and there's a little cloth on the left that would be used to dry and clean these glasses. Um, she's using a rule of thirds composition. The Focal point is on the right third, and we'll talk more about that during our collage expectations as well. This piece is by Miranda. You can see some lovely morphing of the tile floor into the marsh behind. The um, bath water itself is both bath and um, marsh, um, and some really unexpected juxtapositions. That floating window with the city scene behind it, the fish coming out of the um, shower spigot and things like that. This piece by Kelsey is also rule of thirds. Um, the focal point is on the right third of the page. Um, she's got a lot of humor in this piece as that fish googly eyes stare out at you and some lovely color schemes here. 
Here's one by Maya Kish, um, and it's a really beautiful example of who Maya is as a person. She absolutely loves animals and loves drawing animals and humans and their interactions with each other, and she pulled that out into this piece. This piece is done by Holland Folker. It might be maybe my favorite piece ever by a student. Oh, I can't say that. As I say that, I keep thinking of other ones that are some of my favorites too. Usually if a student says, Miss Sabo, I'm going to draw a big eye, I'm like, no, because it's kind of cliche. I've seen it a million times. But Holland did this in a new and different way, utilizing the earth as the iris. The pupil is a peace sign, so there's some great morphing in there and unexpected juxtapositions. The skin around the eye is kind of a morph of skin and galaxy and creates a really, really interesting composition. And dare I say, she did an outstanding job with colored pencil too. This piece by Raphael is a great example of morphing. If you look at the petals of those flowers, they are both petals and fish at the same time, um, which I just think I don't know. There's like humor in this piece, but it's like subtle, low key. I just love it. I love that little fish on the top of the flower with his little mouth open. Here we have a piece by Charlie um, with flowers growing out of this mouth, kind of this, this unexpected juxtaposition of this floral landscape kind of filling in around the piece. And the bat wings are meant to kind of mimic the leaf shapes behind as well. I love this composition, how it's contained within the shape of the leaves and the bat. And then there's just the blank space behind it. This is a centered composition, by the way. Here we have a piece by Ariel, um, and it is very much inspired by Dali. You can see his little mustache curl. You can see the idea of a landscape very much like the Catechez landscapes in his pieces, that desert, dry, warm landscape in the background. Um, a great piece that kind of harkens back to her own inspirations. What I really want you to do in this unit is have some fun enjoy being creative and seeing what you can do and practicing the drawing techniques you've already learned and laying on top of that the use of colored pencil. Here's where we're gonna go with this unit. It's a surrealistic colored pencil drawing. I have morphing with branches that morph into the hair. The hair morphs into the edges around the flowers. The hair morphs into the nest. There's unexpected juxtaposition. This woman has a nest on her head with a bird in it. These leaves and flowers kind of framing out the composition as well. This is where we're going. This is one of my examples, an end product. This piece started here. So beginning to end. We're gonna start our surrealistic pieces by making collages. So what I did is I went through a magazine, I cut out a whole bunch of different stuff that I found interesting, and then I started to play with them in different um, places and orientations and thinking about how they would combine. Once you're done with the collage, you're going to make a composition sketch. So if you look at this, this is a really quick drawing. What I'm doing in this composition sketch is taking the collage and making it into my own version of things because I don't want my drawing in the end to look exactly like the collage. It is inspired by it. So let's look at another example of this. I went into some magazines, I found this image of this woman sitting in this old high back chair I found interesting, and these light bulbs, and I found those interesting, and I thought, wouldn't it be so interesting if I had these kind of hanging in front of this woman, kind of in an outdoor scene. So here I, I drew it out, I put her in a different type of hat, like she's on a walk, and you can see the light bulbs hanging down. I'm also using a rule of third composition. I'm putting my subject on a line of the third, and the full Focal point, which is her face, is on an intersection. And then my landscape in the background lines up here, the light bulbs with the top edge. Doing rule of thirds, one thing you want to be careful of is not to line things up in a postage stamp. Then, as I was thinking about this, it morphed again in my own mind into something different. I remembered a photograph that I had taken a long time ago as a reference image for a painting that I did. And I thought, you know, this would be really interesting. And then I thought, what if that chair was sitting in a field? And at the time, I was planning a piece that had poppies in it. So she's sitting in a field of poppies. These little sketches are poppies. I've got my tree line behind. I've got my light bulbs up here. And we're still rule of thirds. She's sitting, she being the focal point, on this intersection here, and the field and the light bulbs occupy the horizontal thirds. 
What I did then is I wanted to have really good references. So I went out and I found a chair that I really liked that I thought, thought fit the piece. I got some light bulbs that I could draw from. I found tons of different images of poppies. That's what all of this is. I have my reference image of Hannah in the chair. And my next step then was creating my compositional line drawing and then adding color. So here you can see the compositional line drawing and you can see that I've started to add color using colored pencils. I'm still using rule of thirds, that's that third intersection here that she's at. Um, but I've gotten quite a bit more detailed and really started to layer in those colors. This is the process that you will go through from beginning to end. The first thing you're going to do is get yourself some magazines. If you're one of my students, I've sent one home, some home with you or I have some available for you in class. And you're just going to flip through it and everything that you see that you think, well, that could be kind of cool, you don't have to have a plan for it, you're going to rip it out of the magazine. I want you to look for things that could be main subjects, like this guy or that could be good details, like maybe these coins could make a good detail, or good backgrounds. Ooh, butterflies. <laughs> Look for anything that you react to, and your reaction can be like that, ooh, butterflies. Or it could be like, oh, gross, or like, ooh, that's interesting, or oh my gosh, that's beautiful. So you want main focus. You want to also look for things like these that could be great details and you wanna look for things that could make interesting backgrounds, like this. I tell my students to always rip out the images, don't cut them out. If you rip out the whole page, the rest of the magazine will stay fairly nice for the next person who comes along. But if you try to cut it out, um, it becomes kind of a mess for the next person. You want to have about 10 images that could be great backgrounds, you want about 10 images that could be good details, and you want about 10 images that could be great focal points. All right, our next step is to do just really loose cutouts of these items. So you can start to see them in isolation. So you're just gonna go around, you're not gonna try to cut these perfectly because you're not making a collage as a piece of art, you're using these as inspiration for art. So we just wanna get rid of some of that excess background. At this point, I usually try start creating piles. I'll make a pile of backgrounds, I'll make a pile of focal points, and I'll make a file, or a pile, sorry, could be a file, I guess. I'll make a pile of good details. At this point, I've kind of made my pile of backgrounds, focal points, and details. And I'm gonna get out these two sheets. In class, I give my students just two print-offs, one that has a centered compositional setup and one that has rule of thirds. If you're not one of my students or you don't have one of these at home, you can simply divide a piece of paper into thirds in each direction and a second piece of paper into halves. Um, and then I'm gonna start thinking about different compositions. So I'm gonna do, one, as I was cutting things out, I had this idea. I found this um, girl, this this figure with these huge eyes, and it just I, it was kind of compelling to me. And I found this image of an old barn and this image of an old barn. Um, and I thought it could be really interesting if that barn was kind of, her head morphs into that, so like her bangs, the lines of her bangs could kind of come up and become the siding on this. And the silo could sit down on her shoulder and kind of morph out of her shoulder. And then in the background, do some kind of farm scene like this. I don't think I would have a second barn in it. I would probably just do some kind of country scene. So I'm just kind of playing around with different things. So my collages are more about me thinking about how these things are going to morph or what's juxtaposed next to another thing and less about this is exactly what my drawing is going to look like later. For example, this background isn't big enough to fill this whole page, but when I draw it, I'm gonna draw it big. Or I might not even wanna keep this background. I might wanna get rid of the barns and just have like this water scene and forest or maybe find my own different background that I wanna use or maybe go take one myself. This barn would be much smaller because it's gonna be on her head. And I don't know if I'd have her whole body in here because I'd wanna have this barn larger in comparison to her. Um, so I just kind of move those things around. This is what it would look like centered. She's my focal point. I want her and her head right in the middle. I might want to play with what this could look like as a rule of thirds composition too. 
In rule of thirds, at these intersections, that's where I'm gonna put my focal point. I'm gonna put it on one of those intersections. So if I've got a circular focal point like she is, I'll put it at that intersection and that barn there. And then my scene, I would have the, land, the line, the horizon line, line up either here on this horizon or here on this horizon. Um, and so what I can do with these two sheets is kind of play around how they would look in rule of thirds versus centered. And I think this composition would work really nicely centered. I think that this figure kind of calls for a centered composition. So I'm gonna set that to the side. And then I'm gonna keep looking through all of my different items and how I could morph and play with them. I saw this guy and I was like, oh, that hat could be something really cool. Like if I wanna go in like a very Dali-esque move, I could make this hat into a fried egg, right? Like how Vladimir Kush slash um, Dali would that be to have this cowboy with this fried egg hat? I think that could be pretty sweet. Put him over on this rule of thirds. And then I'm looking for different um, landscapes to put behind them. I could do this like south, um, gosh, I don't know where that is. That reminds me of the needles in the Black Hills of South Dakota. I could have that back there and kind of some more mountain-esque landscape in front of him. Oh, or maybe I have these shelves kind of big behind him with all these snakes and things in them. That would be pretty awesome. Or if I wanna go really crazy, I don't know if I have any images like this, I could do like this very city scene back behind him. That's kind of unexpected or even an ocean. Um, or something that doesn't make sense with him as a cowboy. Now, I don't have a fried egg, but if I know I wanna put a fried egg there, when I draw my composition sketch, I can do that. So I just kind of look through these things and I think about, well, what could stuff become? So here I have this boot. Oh, you guys remember that snake I found? So I'm looking at that boot and I'm looking at that shoelace. I don't know where my snake went but I had that really cool snake I ripped out. What if his shoelace became the snake and then I had butterflies kind of all around behind it. And I like the idea of this running along this third and this third and then that snake kind of curling up around and behind. So if you're looking at how this works, the process of making these collages, you're really kind of looking at images and you're playing around with like, ooh, what if that became this? Or this kind of looks like that. Or, oh, I could do this. For the collage portion, just take your time. Play around a lot with how things interconnect, what one shape reminds you of, how you can play things off of each other. Try to come up with some things that really spark your imagination and you're excited about. And remember, surrealism is weird. <laughs> and weird is okay, okay? I wanna to talk to you about your next step, which is that composition drawing. So for your composition drawing, if I have a uh, centered, collage. In my sketchbook, I'm going to draw two lines that basically split the page in half, and I'm going to center my composition sketch on that page. The purpose of the collage is really to represent an idea that I have in my mind. And the purpose of the sketch is to show you what that idea is, what I have in my imagination in my head. So there's some variations you can see between photograph or the collage and the sketch. My face is larger here, the bird is smaller and there's a nest. In my sketch, I've gotten rid of the pine cone on the right side and I've replaced it with leaves. There's a lot more flowers. I've built them into a shape that kind of frames the face. Um, I'm showing you more what I'm thinking. So as your teacher, when you show me this and this, I can see where you're going. I can see what your vision is. These sketches should not take you a ton of time. I want you to spend your time drawing on your actual drawing. I just wanna see what your compositional idea is here. And in the end, you can see my finished piece is much more detailed and carefully done than my sketch and looks quite a bit different from the collage, although you can see the inspiration from one to the other. I'll show you a few more examples of collages and sketches. So here I have one ladder, a woman's face, an owl. The original idea I had was to make the owl big behind the women, have the ladder morph into the neck of this woman and these two women kind of looking in um, thoughtfully from the side. And then I changed it to the owl morphing into the face with these two women looking in. And then I decided not to draw it because it reminded me too much of anamorphs. <laughs> um, 
Here's another collage. My idea here was this woman's face, these curls in her hair. The curls would kind of morph and build around these planets. And here you can see that broken down in the sketch a little bit more and her face lined up on the rule of thirds. But again, if we look at the original sketch that I showed you when we came in, for this piece, it started with this image and me thinking, oh, I really like that idea of those things hanging down and this woman here. And eventually, I got to the point where I came up with two different sketches. The first one, which was a much closer view of the woman with the landscape in the background, and the second variation where I have that chair sitting in the field of poppies with the lights coming down. And in the finished piece, you can see that the poppies, I've got some very, very close to you. They're gonna fade back as I go back into the drawing. Um, and then these light bulbs against these trees, even casting a little bit of light shade, or bright, uh, kind of too bright where you're not seeing the trees behind it. Um, so the original collage changes quite a bit. It's just a way to inspire yourself to create something, very much in the mode of surrealism, where you look at an image and you try to think of it in different ways and how it can, can be bind in different situations. You're really creating an image almost like it's out of a dream, something you wouldn't see in real life, but one of those weird things where you wake up and you're like, huh, did that, did I just dream that? Did that come out of my head? <laughs> and you start to wonder a little bit about your own sanity, which is okay. Um, but take your time, play around with things, and understand that this is a process. Today I want you to start with the collage, and then I want you to get your sketches done by the next time that we meet. At that point, we'll talk about your compositions and start learning about colored pencils. So have some fun, my friends. Be a little weird.